Michio, I am absolutely obsessed with understanding reality, what the cosmos is. And I have a sense that to understand the future of humanity, while it might seem to be accidental in one sense, the presence of intelligence in the universe adds something special. So let's just look at the far future of the universe look at where humanity could possibly go, or other intelligence. How can we analyze this far future of intelligence? When we physicists look in outer space for advanced civilizations, we don't look for little green men. We look for type one, type two, and type three civilizations ranked by energy. A type one civilization consumes all the energy coming from the star, and they control the weather. They control the oceans, volcanoes, earthquakes, anything planetary they control. They have a Buck Rogers type civilization. But eventually they exhaust- now That's beyond what we have. That we're, we're not there yet. Yeah, we, we are type zero. Uh, we get our energy from dead plants, oil and coal. Right. Eventually a planetary civilization exhausts the energy of a planet and they go to the stars. They eat stars for breakfast. They control the entire output of the mother's sun and that's called type two. For example, the Federation of Planets on Star Trek, Captain Kirk and uh, Spock, they roam a portion of the galaxy as a type two civilization. But then there's type three. A type three civilization is truly galactic. Like for example, the Borg, if you're a Star <laughs> Trek fan, they eat type two civilizations for breakfast mm -hmm. or perhaps uh, Independence Day, when these aliens roam across the galaxy, savaging planets one by one. By the time you're type three, you have the ability to manipulate space-time itself. Mm. Perhaps open up gateways, perhaps wormholes to distant points in the universe. We can only dream about this because we are type zero. We hardly even rate on this cosmic scale. Now, some physicists have said, what about type four? extra galactic, beyond galactic power. Think of the Q on Star Trek. The Q is almost like a godlike creature that can manipulate space-time by thinking about it. What is beyond the galaxy? Dark energy, the energy of nothing. The energy of empty space, all the vast regions between stars and galaxies. And that's killing the universe. The emptiness between galaxies is pushing the galaxies apart, eventually giving us doomsday that the universe will freeze in ice as the universe becomes so big, temperatures drop to absolute zero. By the time you're type four, perhaps you can manipulate the cosmological constant, perhaps open up gateways to other universes, perhaps do what is only found on Twilight Zone episodes <laughs> late at night, open up gateways, to other realities. Let's focus on that. Let's look to the really far future when according to physics, everything is totally blown apart, virtually absolute zero in temperature, nothing happening, uh, uh, particles separated by vast regions of the universe and total, total death, total heat death of everything. What are the possible ways, just possible, that a type three or a type four civilization in the far, far future can manipulate space or time to save intelligence in the universe. Our universe is a soap bubble of some sort that's expanding and one day will be so cold that even life itself cannot survive. At that point, an advanced civilization may create a tiny little soap bubble, a lifeboat, this soap bubble will peel off a secondary child universe or baby universe, as Stephen Hawking says, and perhaps allow us to go to another universe or create our own universe. In other words, the ability to play God. We've worked out the mathematics, the equations. They seem to say that if you have an atom smasher that can tr concentrate tremendous amounts of energy at a single point, you can perhaps open up a gateway a baby universe, a child universe, and perhaps that is the only way to escape the death of the universe is by leaving the universe. So let's take this forward and let's say we're able to do that and such a, an atom smasher to a type three civilization would have to be 
huge. It would have to maybe be light years in, in uh, diameter. A minimum of 10 everything. light years. I've done the calculation. <laughs> a minimum of 10 light years, you would have to have an anosash stretching across several star systems in order to do this. Now today, of course, we are type zero. This is all sheer speculation in science fiction. But to a type three civilization or type four, facing the death of everything there is, this perhaps is their only possibility of escape. So we build this gigantic uh, uh, atom smasher that's uh, the 10 light years in, in circumference or diameter? Or? In, in, in the radius. In radius, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we open up this, now that's such a small thing. Uh, how, do we, how do we then, how does it save us? What do we do? How do we get into it? <laughs> Uh, we've calculated the size of the gateway yeah. that you would create by assembling all this energy, laser power, particle beams at a single point, and may be big enough for us to travel. Now, let's say for the moment we take the worst case, that the gateway is small, too small for humans to go through. Then we may do what Mother Nature does, and that is send a seed, a seed through it, which contains all our DNA, all the information necessary to create our civilization, shoot it through this gateway to the other universe where it's much warmer, we start all over again, and these, uh, these microscopic robots then reassemble our DNA, reassemble all of us on the other side. Now, that, at that point, that wouldn't literally be us. It might have the same DNA, but it would, it would be like a twin brother who, who has the same DNA and who may look the same, but is really a totally different person. And has the same neural circuits, yeah. has the same personality, the same uh, memories as you, right. indistinguishable right. from the original yeah, creators. That gets into a whole other identity issue, but that, in, 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 uh, in principle, would be possible for this type three or type four civilization that can manipulate a galaxy or extra galactic uh, uh, sources of space and time and energy. Right, and this also raises a very intriguing possibility, sheer speculation of course, that perhaps any universe that has intelligent life in it, consciousness, intelligent life, will create baby universes, will create lifeboats and proliferate child universes. So an evolution may take among universes in the multiverse. Survival of the fittest may take place. That the universe- Fittest is, being defined as those that have, that have selected for intelligence. So the right. ones that have intelligence would be the ones that would survive and, and propagate their kind uh, abundantly. Right, so those universes which do not have intelligent life are infertile, they have no children. But those universes that have mild temperatures, stars like us, their planets from a star with liquid ocean at and atmospheres, would create civilizations that could open up child universes, and they would then proliferate these other universes by necessity to escape the death of the parent universe. Now, if that's true, then there would be more and more of those kinds of universes. That's right, and that explains why our universe seems to be so natural. In, among all the universes of the multiverse, why should our universe be special? Why should consciousness be special if most universes are dead universes? Maybe it's because conscious universes, universes which have conscious life in them, have more children and therefore proliferate their DNA and, into other universes. And carrying that just one step forward, if that's at all true, the likelihood of us being the progenitor parent is, is vanishingly small, and we are most likely one of the offspring. Possibly. <laughs> In other words, why is our universe so compatible with life? It didn't have to be this way. Stars didn't have to ignite. Galaxies didn't have to coalesce. Why are we here today? It's perhaps because our universe has survived in an evolutionary sense because our predecessors have created universes where we have mild temperatures, where we have stars that ignite, galaxies that coalesce. What's fascinating is that here we are talking about the far, far future of the universe, of how intelligence can survive, and we're looking to the future, and in doing so, building up physics-based scenarios that, in fact, double back on itself and help explain origins. Let so origins and ends begin to, 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 to intersect. And some people say, well, this is speculation, but is it consistent with the known laws of physics? And the answer is yes. 
Everything I've said, no matter how outlandish it may seem, <laughs> is consistent with our understanding of the physical universe, that our universe will probably die in the future, that it may be possible for intelligence to leave our universe, in which case those universes may be those which proliferate, have children, evolve. The DNA would be the physical constants of the universe. The DNA changes slightly to create more and more universes which are compatible with intelligent life, with type 3, type 4 civilizations. So the only universes which have children are universes which have consciousness in them. Type 3 and type 4 universes. So maybe Star Trek wasn't too far off when it talked about civilizations far, far ahead of us. So we seem to come full circle by talking about the origin of the universe, and then talking about the death of the universe, and then wondering why is our universe compatible with consciousness and intelligence? Perhaps we've come back to the question, why was there a big bang to begin with? Perhaps that bang was an escape hatch. Perhaps that was a lifeboat, civilizations escaping a dying universe.